Hello YouTube. Early on Monday morning, October 27, 2025, residents of Moscow and the Moscow region observed an incredibly beautiful celestial body in the sky low above the horizon. It flew slowly, so the eyewitnesses managed to capture everything on the video. It was shining like a full moon and it was green. Later, observations from other regions arrived. I covered it in another video initially, and I'll put a link in the description. The phenomenon has caused fierce debate, but now astronomers have agreed that we have witnessed the fall of a meteorite with very unusual properties. It fell somewhere in the east of the Novgorod region. Russian media, namely Komsomolskaya Pravda newspaper, asked Alexei Kiristaev, an expert in meteorite search, if there were any chances of finding unique fragments, how to search for them, how to identify them, and what to do with the find if one was lucky to find it. The first impression that almost all experts had was that space debris was glowing in the Moscow sky. The celestial body was flying slowly, or so it seemed, and was being intensely crushed. It also changed color. Rocket and satellite debris often behave this way, because technological layers with different compositions are alternately burned in them. But some astronomers insisted that it was a natural, albeit very strange celestial body and it seems to have partially reached our planet. They wrote that it is possible to detect up to 90 kilograms of a substance, but not in a piece, not in one piece, but in lumps and pebbles from the smallest dust to a weighty cobblestone. A discussion ensued, sometimes very rough. Some people immediately tried to draw the trajectories of the celestial guest, but it turned out so-so. Observations only from the Moscow region did not give the desired viewing angle. Others began to look for alternative hypotheses. For example, that the body, that object, was flying at an altitude of not hundreds as usual, but dozens or even just units of kilometers, and that this is a phenomenon of, of a phenomenon of an absolutely incomprehensible nature. At one time, it was discussed whether this was a semi-secret Chinese spacecraft launched to the moon, but lost and for some reason burned down over Moscow. And an asteroid that was recently discovered but mysteriously disappeared from NASA databases was almost identified with the object. Everything was solved by observations from outside the Moscow region. And the main key was the successful determination of the true speed of this object. It was in the range of 17 to 18 kilometers per second. This is more than any possible man-made body. So the theory of space debris has disappeared. However, this is quite small for a natural meteorite, and it was acting weird anyway. At some point, the object almost stopped descending and seemed to float, bouncing off the atmospheric layers like a flat pebble <coughs> that children shoot at the waves, probably because it turned out to be extremely loose. The wreckage of the object fell in the east of the Novgorod region. The hypothetical debris scattering zone looks like an oval on the map and extends from Balagoya and <clears throat> Vishni and Valachok to the east into the forest. Only one more or less settlement, Udomla, falls into this zone. However, there's a possibility that some pieces fell directly onto the Moscow-Petersburg Highway. So far, there have been no reports of finds. Professional expeditions are going to search, for example, the Vernadsky Institute of Geochemistry and Analytical Chemistry of the Russian Academy of Sciences announced their intention to go to the forests. 
So the newspaper asked Alexei Kiristayev, a well-known meteorite catcher and a searcher with vast experience, if it was possible to find something in swamps and thickets. If you don't live in that region and you're going to go and look for it, since there's a long weekend ahead, don't waste your time, said Alexei Kiristayev. These are difficult to pass places, often without roads. Autumn rains add to the difficulties. If a fragment of a meteorite hits even a small puddle, you will just walk by, you won't be able to notice it, stated Alexei Kiristayev. Professional teams have gone to the site, he confirms, and despite the difficulties, they have a non-zero chance of finding something. Although it happens that the search ends in vain. For example, after the destruction of the bright bolide over the Kola Peninsula, it could not be detected. In any case, amateur groups and individual searchers should wait for the first findings made by professionals. If there are such finds, it will be more accurately, it will more accurately outline the search area, as well as give the understanding of what exactly to pay attention to. We don't even understand yet whether it is a stone meteorite, a metal meteorite, or a mixture of stone and metal. Although the hypothesis about stone composition prevails, there is no doubt that as soon as the first piece is found, hundreds of fortune hunters will rush into the forests and swamps of Novgorod region because the object is very interesting. There is even an assumption that it came from interstellar space, according to Alexei Keristaev. Where to look? Searching for a meteorite in the forest is, of course, more difficult than on arable land, and even more so in the desert or on polar ice, but in general, the technique is the same. You walk and look carefully. Metal detectors and other devices, as a rule, are not used. The eyes are the best device. The Chelyabinsk meteorite also fell over the forest, although some of it fell on arable land, says Alexei Kiristaev. Something was found in winter, noticing holes punched in the ice and snow. Something at the very beginning of May before plowing. In general, I personally made my most interesting finds on forest turf. An interesting feature of the forest search is that there are many things lying on the ground that look like a meteorite. And first of all, you'll be surprised. These are the remnants of animal life. To figure it out, you have to take it with your hands. And it's not always pleasant. Gloves help. Well, what to do? If you want heavenly things, so to say, celestial objects, you have to touch terrestrial things. Now... What's the other issue? Price. Intuitively, it seems that since there has been a lot of talk about the Moscow bolide, since so many hypotheses and disputes have borne out, it will be inexpensive. Uh, no, the media has practically no effect on the price, Alexeyev Kristal believes. And so what influences it? If the Moscow bolide left behind tons of stuff, its pieces won't be very expensive. But if they find real grams and these grams turned out to be a rare type of meteorite, then yes. So far, expectations are high. After all, the object is unusual. In general, the meteorite is evaluated by the market, explains Alexei Kiristaev. While there is no meteorite itself, there is no assessment. And as a rule, after high-profile stories, a lot of fakes appear, mostly on websites where sellers are private individuals. We've looked at such sites. So far, they don't offer anything like this. But there is no doubt they will. Without understanding the case, without knowing what meteorites look like, it's not worth embarking on dubious transactions. Alexei Kiristaev reminds, you might as well take a cobblestone from the street, paint it black, pour oil over it, and then calcinate it in an oven to get a melting crust. And here you have something that looks like a meteorite at first glance. Why pay for this? People living in the east of the Novgorod region have better chances than stray searchers for meteorites. The first impulse of the finder is to sell as soon as possible. And the main question is how much it costs. Until the find is examined by experts, until it is regarded by them as a meteorite, it is worth nothing, 
Alexei Kiristov is very categorical about this. Therefore, the most unwise tactic is to rush to sell or just put it on the shelf for your own pleasure. In this case, the object is forever lost to science and you won't be sure if it's really a meteorite. How to recognize a meteorite? Tips from Alexei Kiristaev. Meteorites can look different depending on their fate, so to say, as they pass through the atmosphere as well as their initial composition. But they will almost certainly be covered with a black melting crust. It can be a dense crust that cannot be dislodged or, on the contrary, easily removable, like the Chelyabinsk meteorite, in which a gray substance resembling concrete peeked out from under the black shell. The melting crust resembles soot in color, but it does not smear or dirty your hands, explained Alexeyev Kiristaev. The size of a meteorite can be different, from a pea to a huge stone. The shape is often slightly rounded, but not always. If the meteorite was crushed in the atmosphere, the edges may be sharp. The main thing in the search, besides luck, is attentiveness. It's autumn now, it's dirty everywhere, and the stones are dirty. But this one is beautiful, not dirty. In general, anything unusual should alert you. For example, there are no stones around, but there is a stone here. Or you're walking along a forest path, lying down, you find it. Most likely, it would have been removed from the road long ago. So, it's new here, that stone that you see. Alexei Kiristaev advises residents of the east of the Novgorod region to inspect the roofs and gutters. There's definitely no way a stone from below will get there, only from the sky. Having discovered something, it is necessary, without touching the find, to photograph it and contact specialists. For example, Divernatsky Institute of Geochemistry and Analytical Chemistry of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Is it legal to pick up meteorites and own them? Won't they take it away? No one is taking anything away, reassures Alexei Kiristaev. But they can buy it back from you for the sake of science. This is what I wanted to let you know. And I'll tell you more about this interesting meteorite. Just as I told you about the Chelyabinsk unusual meteorite, if that what was what it was. And I urge you to stay tuned to my channel for more interesting scientific news and also news of paranormal Russia, paranormal Ukraine, Central Asia, Eurasia as a whole, and of course China and Mongolia. And I'm eager to go to Mongolia and explore. It beckons just as Africa did decades ago when I met somebody who was a meteorite hunter. That was decades ago. If you like my research and can support it, please kindly do so to the links you'll find in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. We have to present United Front to YouTube. So... They don't hide my videos. And uh, please tell others uh, about uh, my uh, work and the areas of research that I'm engaged in. This really helps me. I want to thank you for your attention to my work.